Number 10, Mancineal Tree. If you came to this list looking for poison ivy stats, well, you've got another thing coming. The mancineal tree, upon first glance, looks pretty normal. In fact, it looks almost inviting and welcoming. The tropical tree grows a low-hanging fruit, and it can be found most commonly in the Caribbean, Central America, and South Florida. So if you live there, um, don't touch this tree. Sick. And for sure, don't eat the fruit. Also, if you're hungry, just wait till lunch. In fact, don't touch this tree at all. Don't even breathe in the air around this tree. For real, it's that bad. The mancanil is referred to as the beach apple or la manzanilla de la muerte, which translates to little apple of death. Yummy. The plant is riddled with toxins. Even if you put this apple in your mouth and spat it out, the inside of your mouth would still be blistered and your throat as well. It's not comfortable. The tree contains this chemical called forbel. It's so poisonous that if you were to stand under the tree while it was raining to avoid frizz, the water rolling off the tree would burn your skin on contact. So if you're a tree hugger, um, skip this one. Number nine, hogweed. No, Harry Potter does not smoke this. In fact, he doesn't even touch it because he's a Gryffindor. We should all be more like the chosen one. Native to Europe and some parts of the US, hogweed or giant hogweed is, like its name hints, quite tall. They grow up to 14 feet sometimes, so they look pretty threatening before you get close. Its leaves can stretch out quite far with an umbrella pattern. It's a poison disc with purple and white hairs, basically. Now, its sap contains these toxic chemicals called photosensitizing purinocumarins. These chemicals, once on your skin and then in contact of sunlight, start to burn and cause large blisters. So the sunlight will activate this burn like you're a vampire all of a sudden. How weird is that? It's horrible, and on top of that, if the sap gets in your eyes, well, you may become blind. There's quite a few lookalikes to the toxic giant hogweed, but again, like I said, just avoid plants you don't know. If it's fuzzy, odds are it's not gonna feel good later. Always bring toilet paper. Number eight, snake toxin. And here's why I don't f with snakes. Fun fact, did you guys know there's over 600 species of venomous snakes? So uh, yeah, watch your step, I guess. Now I'll admit the ratio isn't too bad. Less than 10% of all snakes can really hurt us. But that small percentage, well, it's enough to wipe out 100,000 people a year. So still pretty bad. Vipers are commonly known. The eastern brown snake, just, you know, horrible creatures. But what is it about their venom that does so much damage in the first place? Well, snake venom is extremely complicated. The way we test its toxicity is by using the LD50 test. And the lower the rating, the more dangerous the toxins are. Remember that for later. Alongside the eastern brown snake, the mainland tiger snake and the Russell viper come in pretty low on the ID50 test. Sure, the dangerous snakes often look the part, but take the boom slang, for example. It avoids confrontation, looks pretty similar to non-lethal snakes, but after one bite, you will eternally bleed until you're dead. From him, that little guy, little licky tongue. That's it, you're dead. Number seven, cyanide. This one can harm you both in gas form and in powder form. How fun. Perhaps one of the more well-known poisons out there, cyanide, of course, can kill you in just minutes. Potassium cyanide can take your life in minutes if it's consumed, but it's confusing what cyanide really does to your body, especially when we weigh in James Bond villains. Like in Spectre, the movie Spectre, Javier Bardem's character pulls out these fake teeth to show that his mouth was burnt horribly after trying to swallow hydrogen cyanide. Great movie, also not really accurate. The reason you shouldn't consume or get near cyanide is that after consuming it, it starts to replace the O2 in your bloodstream so really it's the most harmful to your brain and your heart. Inspector, that wasn't cyanide, that was like acid. But we can pretend that it is. Avoid breathing it in, don't even look at it. In fact, don't even watch the movie Spectre. It's pretty long, I don't know, it's not my favorite of the bunch. Number six, VX. This yellow, tasteless, and odorless liquid can kill you with just one touch. The nerve agent VX is, of course, extremely illegal. It came from ICIS's research from the early 50s when they were developing new insecticides. Well, it worked, but it worked a little too well. It was swiftly outlawed. But the bell cannot be unrung. This was the same nerve gas that was used to take out Kim Jong-nam back in 2017. He was attacked at an airport. Two people rubbed a cloth on his face, covered in VX, and he died on the way to the hospital. He had a horrible seizure because of this. Initially, officials thought that cyanide was used, but in reality, it was only 10 milligrams of VX, this oily liquid. It looks evil. Like, it looks like bad goo. Number five, ricin. One of the biggest villains in the show Breaking Bad, next to, of course, 
Ricin is a chemical found in the seeds of castor oil plants. It looks alarmingly similar to table salt and an extremely small amount of this can kill you. They also come from castor beans, but unlike toxic plants, you aren't going to run into any ricin in the wild. There's also more steps that need to be done before you accidentally poison yourself in mere minutes. Once consumed, ricin enters your cells, and then it prevents them from making the proteins that they need, subsequently dying. So your cells die fast. So depending on if you inhale it, ingest it, or inject it, the results may vary. And by results, I mean it depends how long it'll take before you meet your, you know. Georgi Markov, for example, he got taken out by a ricin attack. It was in 1978, he was waiting for a bus, and a man in a black umbrella, well rather an air gun disguised as an umbrella, shot his right thigh. And it wasn't until three days later that that little sting contained trace amounts of ricin. Number four, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. What is arsenic and why have we heard this name so many times before? It's incredibly toxic in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes contaminated water, air, anything really, it just goes out of the ground. Which leads to arsenic poisoning, so most of the time you develop skin cancer because of it. That's its main attack, skin cancer, horrible. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances. It's a top dog, it's up there. Exposure to toxic metals is a common problem that we're facing still to this day. Number three, poison oak. I remember in elementary school, there was a kid in my class who rubbed poison oak on his face because it was soft. Idiot. Don't do this. This is why we're doing a list on deadly substances. For people like Andrew, his face didn't react well. It blew up, it was this massive rash. Poor kid had to go home. Didn't have a good time. Poison ivy, we all know about. We're good there for the most part, but I have to mention poison oak because I think we should genuinely know this. Poison oak is so much worse. There's another one called poison sumac. Just poison, 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 no. These plants produce a harmful oil called urishi oil, and the rash that follows after you make contact is called contact dermatitis. See, like ricin, it only takes a small amount to cause a huge rash. Poison ivy is known for its leaves. Each one has three tips. Leaves of three, let it be, we all know that one. Poison oak, same idea, but with fuzz on the underside, and has a lighter top. Poison oak, what a joke. There, it rhymes, now we'll all remember. Deal, let's move on. Don't touch plants that have hair. Number two, the kissing bug. Now I know it sounds friendly, maybe a little too friendly, but this bug is not a lover at all. The small kissy boy carries with it a plethora of diseases, one of which is called the Chagas disease. Also known as triatomine bugs, but kissing bugs sounds way better. These little guys are known to suck blood out of humans, like vampires. Why is everything kind of vampire-like on this list? We're pretty up to date with disease bugs like mosquitoes or ticks, but I wanted these guys on the list too because I've never heard of a kissing bug before. They're called that because they usually bite you near the mouth or the eyes. This area here. It carries the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite and it passes to you after the bug poops on your face. That's the main way of spreading the parasite. They bite you and then they fart in your eyes. How rude is that? They should call this one the stink bug because that stinks. Number one, super acid. Yeah, super acid. Of course we're gonna finish off with super acid. Let's do it. We can't end it on a bug. Fluoroantimonic acid is that sci-fi acid that you see that melts through like a spaceship or anything like that. It's a real thing and it's caused by mixing hydrogen fluoride and antimony pentafluoride. Hot combo. This acid can only be mixed with hydrofluoric acid because it's too strong to be mixed with water. It would just go gone, nothing even there anymore. Super acid, it's 20 quintillion times stronger than sulfuric acid. This can not only dissolve your skin tissues and muscle, but it can dissolve glass, glass. The reason we have acids this strong in the first place is that so chemists can break down molecules. Now, some of these molecules are tougher, so they resist common acids. Imagine being stronger than acid. Science is crazy, my brain hurts, let's wrap this up. Kicking off the list at number 10, Deadly Nightshade. Yes, another name that gets right to the punch right away, Deadly Nightshade, AKA Atropa Belladonna. It's another poisonous plant that Macbeth's soldier used to poison their enemies. The thing that makes Deadly Nightshade so commonly known is the sweetness of the berries. Have you ever been outside and you see a berry and like 30% of you just for some reason wants to eat that berry? That's normal, it's called being a human being. That's a good thing to have. But also, curiosity kills, so don't eat those berries. Or any berry, really. Deadly Nightshade can be found in Europe, Asia, and Africa, and it grows purple flowers in groups of three, along with those inviting purple berries. Just two to four of these berries can take a human life. The flower as well, do not ingest this. You'll get poisoned right away, you'll be delirious, it's all bad. Even if a pet chews on a leaf for a hot minute, 
thing's gonna be a goner within the hour. Animals like horses, sheep, rabbits, they eat deadly nightshade salads. They're crazy. Perks of having cool stomachs, I guess. Number nine, calcanthite. Blue calcanthite is a hydrated copper sulfite. Its use in the scientific world is to ore copper. It's extremely rare in its raw form, but if you do happen to come across this blue beauty in an arid region, um, don't lick it. Weird that I have to say that, but check this out. This apparently is an issue. One Reddit user purchased a sample of blue calcanthite and they shared their experience, encouraging others to keep it stored in a glass case. Licking this rock will poison you and even touching it can turn your skin blue for a while. So unless you're auditioning for the Blue Man Group, stick to the mood gems for now. Number eight, Jimson Weed. Jimson Weed sounds like the name of a small town auto mechanic. Jimson Weed sounds like just a nice dude, you know? When in reality, he's actually a mean old man. The Jimson Weed flower is white or violet, it looks pretty harmless, and it grows up to five feet tall, so it too catches your eye. The seed pod in the middle looks like something Bowser would throw at you. It's a spiky little seed pod. Don't inhale Jimson Weed. This plant can cause hallucinations, seizures, breathing problems, and your heart will speed up like crazy instantly. It's named after Jamestown weed because back in 1676, British soldiers got too close and hallucinated for 11 days straight. It was reported that they grinned like monkeys and kissed each other. Jimson weed is a gateway drug to kissing your homies. Fun fact. This grows in Southern Ontario. This is literally behind our building. Can we handle this? Is this all a dream? Chris, why are you dressed as a scarecrow? What's happening? Number seven, cinnabar. Not to be confused with cinnabun, this natural mercuric sulfide has been used in Chinese mineral medicine for over 2,000 years. Its bright red appearance have caused people to use it as jewelry at some point. And while sure, it looks flashy, it's, as you guessed, extremely toxic. It looks like something that would fight Spider-Man. It's this coating on top and in between rocks. Cinnabar is one of these few minerals that was found independently and then processed and used in the ancient world. So long as you lived in a country with an active volcano, you could find cinnabar. It would be ground up into fine powder sometimes and then mixed with liquids to create paint. Powdered cinnabar was once used in ancient cosmetics, but of course that didn't last long. As the title hints towards, it was quite toxic on the face. Leave the eyeliner at home for this one. Number six, hooded pitui. Ah yes, I bet you didn't expect a bird to be on this list. Gotcha. The hooded patui sounds so mysterious. Why is he wearing a hood? Perhaps because it's raining. He lives in the rainforest after all. Love those cheesy jokes, I'll always keep them in. These little guys have an orange red chest with a dark black head. They're beautiful birds that are found mainly on the islands of New Guinea. Some say this bird is scary looking, and while I disagree with that, you should avoid the hooded patui. Its skin and feathers are covered in a neurotoxin called homopatracotoxin. If this bird landed on your shoulder and started to whistle tunes in your ear, sure, you're gonna feel like a Disney princess for a bit, but eventually, those toxins will start to cause numbness. While this isn't too bad on humans, other animals bite the bullet pretty quickly. These birds aren't taking bats and radioactive puddles. Their neurotoxins come from the beetles that they eat. Nature is fascinating, terrifying, but Fascinating nonetheless. Number five, asbestos. Another name we recognize, but are we really even sure why? Asbestos is a natural mineral made of these thin fibers. Its primary use was for fireproofing and its origins and use date back to the first century. It was used as an insulator and due to its fibers being so fine and heat resistant, it could be added to cement, paper, or cloth, you name it, in order to make them more durable. It helps. Its dangers weren't widely known though until 1989. That's when the EPA banned the use of asbestos. It's so fine that you can breathe it in and then after that you're susceptible to lung cancer. It's a rare type of lung cancer specifically due to asbestos inhalation. It's called mesothelomia. More than 39,000 Americans lose their lives a year because of asbestos related diseases. Number four, Tobernite. Look out Superman, we've also got a green radioactive rock and a mom named Martha. Tobernite looks a lot like kryptonite, the fictional substance that weakens Kryptonians, but on Earth we call this radiation. Yeah, it still does some damage. We're not super, but we'll cough a bunch. The mineral contains uranium and naturally releases radon, so if you're admiring the space rock, you better do so from the other side of an airtight, transparent container. Breathing in this rock means you're breathing in hydrated green copper, phosphate, and all things leading again to lung cancer. If you're into gems, maybe leave the time stone at home. There's a reason they call this the mineral from hell. Number three, the rosary pea. Anything that starts with the, you know it's bad news. The good news though is the rosary pea doesn't look like something you want to eat, unlike the deadly nightshade berries. It looks like a ladybug. It's all red with a black spot on top. It looks like something the devil would offer you. Eating just one of these peas can cause death 
very quickly. The rosary P has been the culprit in many jewelry makers deaths. This P was often used as a bead due to its mesmerizing natural colors, but what would happen is while they were poking a hole through this tiny piece, sometimes the needle would slip and poke a finger or two. Normally this is just another day for somebody into arts and crafts, but the poison would enter your bloodstream and well, that's a wrap. Like I said on part one of this list, if you're not sure about anything berry wise, just don't eat it. Just walk away, don't even touch it. Don't sniff random bushes, don't lick any weird rocks, don't eat any strange berries. Please, thank you. Next, number two, comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea what's in our ocean still to this day, like 98%, we're like, well, we just don't know. We discover some crazy fish every year, some deep sea fish with bioluminescence that are for sure aliens, while others are natural predators. Like the comb star, for example, a starfish that contains pterodoxin, this deadly neurotoxin that can cause you paralysis. Imagine having this guy in Finding Nemo. The movie would be like eight minutes long. Done. Kids crying immediately. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. And before you ask, no, we don't have an antidote for that quite yet. Swim in fear. And finally, number one, polonium. This radioactive metalloid is extremely rare. So unless you're Homer Simpson, I don't think you'll be seeing any glowing substance anytime soon, which is great. Polonium is used primarily as a heat source on an atomic level. It glows bright blue because it's so strong that it excites the air molecules surrounding it. See, unlike acid, the particles in polonium don't have enough power to actually get through your skin, but it's still radioactive, which is bad news bears. One gram of polonium produces the same amount of radiation as five kilograms of radium. We had cyanide on our part one, well, this element is 250,000 times more toxic than that. Only one gram can take out 10 million people. A real life use of this element was against the former spy Alexander Litvinenko. Just a trace amount was slipped into his tea, so British, and he suffered for 23 days before passing away. Worst English breakfast ever. Kicking up the list at number 10, we have lake acid. Not to be confused with Lake Placid, although that one's pretty bad too. The Lake of Acid is in Ethiopia, and since we mentioned super acid on part one, I figured this would be a fun one to bring out. Also referred to as the gateway to hell, nice. The Danaki Depression is made up of boiling hot ponds that release chlorine and sulfur gases into the air, into your big nose. So you don't even have to take a dip, just standing around this lake can instantly kill you. So where does something like this come from? How does a lake of acid just come to be? Like, what the f this horrifying landscape is the result of three continental plates being torn apart. It's part of the East African rift system and not one, but two active volcanoes surround the Danaki Depression, hence the, you know, bubbling magma lurking below the dry landscape. It's the hottest place on earth for a reason. Active hydrothermal ozones aren't new, that's what Yellowstone National Park is, but you need a gas mask to take a dip here, so it's worth mentioning. Number nine, cactus. These pointy plants are no laughing matter except for when they wear sunglasses. That's a little silly, I actually kinda like that a bit. These needles that stick out, obviously you don't wanna touch this plant, but what exactly will happen if you do by accident? Well, it depends which cacti you touch. Also, I like saying cacti, I think it's plural for cactus. I hope it is, because I'm pretty confident. I've been telling people for like five years it's cacti. The most deadly is the saguaro cactus. It grows up to an intimidating 50 feet tall. So unless you live in Arizona or California, you don't have to worry about bumping into Spike Jones over here. These needles are of course massive, but what really sucks is the toxic sap that enters your bloodstream. So if you're handling this cactus for some reason, you need to use gloves. There's also a cactus that straight up jumps at you, like it moves, it jumps. How scary is that? Back in 2014, during the PGA Golf Tour in Arizona, Rory McIlroy accidentally hit a golf ball straight at a cameraman right in his chest, which already sucks, but when he stepped back after being struck by Rory's golf ball, again, in the chest, Chola Cactus attacked him. What a two for one. Then fans had to gather around and pick them out with keys. They had to pick cactus out of a guy's back with keys. That's amazing, what a horrible day. That's why you don't watch live golf. You're in the middle of nowhere, and also, you're watching live golf. Number eight, you. It literally has the word ew in it, so you shouldn't forget this one. It's also referred to as ground hemlock, and despite how they look, these are not berries. They're cones, almost, or bells. They're evil, they're poison, they don't look appetizing. To kids, though, anything bright that glows on trees, they're like, also bell. So they eat it, it's dangerous. They're actually like the main target, we gotta watch out for that. They often don't think twice. The main toxin that we're playing with when it comes to you and your you is Taxol. Taxol is commonly used in chemotherapy. Right now we're at the point where we're making these in a lab because their populations haven't exactly sprung back into action. We kind of need them right now. They're making you in a lab. Yeah, they're making you in a lab. I'm talking to you, dude. 
If you ingest a Taxol, you're minutes away from having a bad night. Either hypothermia, seizures, respiratory failure, you might actually go into a coma. It's really not good at all in any sense. Stay away from it. It only takes half a gram of these flat pointy needles to kill you. So just avoid all that smoke in total. Number seven, holly. There's nothing holly and or jolly about these berries. Another common red berry is the American holly, aka Ilex opaca, which sounds more evil. It's a tasty treat for birds, but like a lot of us probably don't realize, is our feathery friends can eat poison pellets all day long and never skip a whistle. They're just hashtag built different. Humans, however, if we ingest a holly jolly holly, we're welcoming in an alarming amount of toxins. You're also ingesting illicin, which is a straight path to vomiting, nausea, all that nasty huh, huh stuff. Normally I wouldn't include holly on a list like this, but tis the season, the more you know. Number six, golden frogs. One of the world's deadliest substances comes from the cutest amphibian, frogs. Don't let his little wet hands and tiny smile fool you. This guy is nothing but trouble. Or rather, the alkaloid on their skin is. So if you're catching frogs on the weekend in human forests of Columbia, as we all do, leave the golden frogs alone. A Super Mario star will not pop out when you catch it. Instead, the batraco toxin will interfere with your sodium ion levels in your nerves, resulting in your heart failing. We mentioned that LD50 scale before, that's the lethal dose table, and it tells you which toxins are worse than others, and how many milligrams of the substance kills 50% of the test subjects. Petrachotoxin on the LD50 is only two micrograms, so two grains of salt, really, that's the size that we're talking about, that can kill you. The interesting part is, it's not the frogs that produce these toxins, but rather lab-born frogs. These ones aren't poisonous, meaning that it comes from their natural diet somewhere. American ornithologist Jack Dombachier was in contact with a hooded Patui, that was the bird that I mentioned on part two, and after he touched his mouth, it instantly started to go numb. So something in both these animals' diets is making them super villains. Isn't that lovely? What is it? Tell us. Number five, the electric eel. Awesome, that's the worst thing I've ever seen, neat. The moray eel, first of all, don't do what he just did. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. It's not a smart move. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off and you should never touch eels in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti. Great name, gets to the punch. Appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, the guy who invented the battery. Cool. It can release a shock up to 860 volts, which is more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry and has teeth. <laughs> See ya. Number four, blister beetles. Nice, that's a great name, blister beetles. I wanna avoid this beetle right away. The blister beetle is chock full of cathartin. It's also seen in the Spanish fly. See, back in the day, like, when you know we didn't know much, medical experts would use cathartin to introduce blisters. That was a common remedy, I guess. These little bugs have this poison inside of them. Blister beetles are tiny and they often sport a metallic green or blue wing cover. If a bird tries to eat one of these, stick around because it will not stay down. That beetle will come right back up and then continue on his little little beetle business, whatever they do. Probably something to do with tax forms, I would assume. On the outside, cathartin causes a dermatitis reaction, and if you have the misfortune of swallowing one of these bugs, like that sad bird, it could very well be your last meal. Back in the 1800s, people would ugh, lick them. Uh, don't lick bugs, if I had to tell you that. Now you know. Hit that thumbs up for not licking bugs. Spread the word. <laughs> Number three, the cow killer. If you see a hairy red and black bug of any kind, don't pet it, okay? <laughs> like, just don't, this is a horrible list. I'm like, don't do any of these things. The Eastern Velvet Ant, AKA the Cow Killer, isn't actually an ant, spoiler alert. Despite what I, you know, just said, it's actually a wasp. The female is wingless, so it looks like an ant. But don't let that get to your head. Her sting is extremely painful. She doesn't get along well with her own type. That's how mean she is. These cow killers are usually found riding solo rather than nesting with, you know, hundreds of other friends. Here's the most evil thing about this wasp slash ant slash hairy creature from hell. It's a parasite to bumblebees. We're trying to save bees. Meanwhile, these females are laying eggs in beehives in order for the wasp to be born and then immediately have an all-you-can-eat breakfast. That is sad, but also it's nature. Nature sucks sometimes. If you have the misfortune of stepping on a cow killer, two things will happen. A pheromone is released on impact. This calls the colony to attack. Hot start, great. There's venom coming from their saliva, so already it sucks, but then the actual venom enters your bloodstream after the initial bite. Double the fun, triple the excitement. Where's the hospital? Number two, tetrodotoxin and batracotoxin. 
I tried that so many times before, but we cut it. Grab your goggles and speedos, because we're heading underwater for this two-in-one. With an LD50 that's less than that of batrachotoxin, mitotoxin is part of the reason that I don't even mess with shellfish. It's made up of dinoflagellate, marine plankton that can cause heart failure if consumed. This cardiotoxin cranks up the flow of calcium ions running through the cardiac muscle membrane, and obviously that doesn't feel good. Mitotoxin is often found in tropical and subtropical areas of the Pacific, but again, unless you're poking around shellfish and just eating random fish that you find, you should be pretty good to avoid this problem. A fish you should never touch, however, is the puffer fish. When disturbed, these guys like to expand out like a balloon from hell, and their prickly skin, of course being riddled with toxins, will jab you. Remember that last scene in Finding Nemo where all the fish are finally free, but then they're stuck in bags? Everybody in the theater all whispered to each other that the puffer fish could just expand and then pop all the bags. True, we know what's up. That would definitely work. Thing is, the puffer fish would be the last man standing. Almost all these balloon kits contain tetrodotoxin, which is about 1,200 times more poisonous than cyanide. And finally, number one, arianite. Tiny crystals you might accidentally <gasps> inhale. What a terrifying way to finish this part three. Arianite in its natural form is fascinating. It's this fiber, almost. This thin mineral that if touched, will break apart into tiny pieces and float in the air. First of all, that's not gonna feel nice, smacking a mineral. If you ever had glass stuck in your hand, this is way worse. Arianite is part of a group of minerals called zeolites, these hollow minerals with almost hairy looking insides. Exposure to these can cause lung cancer. Now luckily, arianite mining stopped back in the 80s, but that doesn't mean miners are off the hook necessarily. Even when mining other zeolites, this deadly mineral can still attack because it's in the air. It was discovered in 1898, but it wasn't until the 1970s where the Turkish government found out it was very lethal. They did a study on why there was so much mesotheloma in the lungs of villagers in the mountain region, and this mineral was the cause for 43% of all those deaths. The death rate for asbestos installers was a 9.7 percent in comparison, and that still was horrible. Just stick to mood rings. Leave Arianite alone. Mm -hmm.